Taliban orders all women to wear face covering burqas in public. On April 30th, Hibatullah Akhundara, the Taliban chief, announced that women should wear a burqa that covers the person from head to toe, including their face. According to ooh, Akhundara, the new dress code is quote unquote traditional and respectful. The Taliban is slowly imposing severe infringements on women's rights, despite promising to respect and uphold women's rights after taking over. The order instructs all women to cover their face, except the eyes, as per Sharia directives, to avoid provocation when meeting with men who are not related to them. The male chaperone of a woman caught showing her face would be warned first, then jailed for three days, and if the violations continued, he would face an even stricter sentence. In an attempt to justify the order, the announcement explained that burqas are a part of Afghan culture and have been used for ages. Critics also warned the Taliban leadership that, announced, that such announcements would scare off foreign aid and delay international recognition of the Taliban government. However, uh, Khalid Hanafi, acting minister for the Taliban's vice and virtue ministry, said they only want their quote their, they only want quote their sisters to live with dignity and safety. Mm -hmm. So, if you tell the Taliban that, because a lot of people are keep saying that, um, hey, we thought you said you're going to respect women's rights. I mean, I don't understand, but why people keep saying that because Taliban keeps repeating that well this is respecting women rights like i don't i don't know how many times they have to keep saying that for people to understand but like oh they lied to us they said they're going to protect women put protect women rights and, and Taliban doesn't feel like they've been lying Taliban feels like this is exactly what we meant <laughs> what are you talking about this is women rights we don't respect your women rights. We have our women rights. This is <laughs> Islamic women rights. And we're doing exactly what we told you we're going to do. So that's, yeah, that would be their justification of this. But I'm actually pretty surprised about how fast they're moving in this direction. Because at the end of the day, as much as, as ideological they are, they need money right now. Um, and they know they need money. And they're not stupid. And this is... Um, a bad signal to send to the international world because a lot of people are waiting for the Taliban to just throw them just a small sign but like hey look we're respecting some rights a little bit just so that the international community could be like oh so that's good enough like let's go finally invest in Afghanistan for whatever because a lot of people are waiting for this right um, and Taliban is just not giving them that and people are like oh my god come on just give us anything right so and Taliban really needs the money and the investment so people are they stupid? No, they're not stupid. The reason why they're moving, they might be moving in this direction fast is because the internal struggles they're having, right? It's not just, I mean, as much as it's a huge threat to them that investments are not coming in and people are going to be angry and poverty is going to like maybe eat them from within. Um, the greater threat is other Taliban members who are going to be upset about not upholding Islamic values. So poor people and instability in Afghanistan is a threat to Taliban, but angry other angry Taliban members are a bigger threat, right? Maybe. So again, they're not idiots. They're just assessing which is a greater threat. And I think they're responding accordingly. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes complete sense. Um, I think, yeah, it, it's... It's, oh my gosh, it's so rough. I, it's really interesting to see, like, the reactions from people in the West about this. But what drives me crazy is that when they say, oh, well, this is, and people in the quote-unquote West, I don't know what the hell the means anyways, okay? People outside of Afghanistan think that the burqa is traditional Afghan clothing. It's not. It's not. Like, traditional Afghan dresses are so stunningly beautiful I actually got sucked down a wormhole of looking at them on Instagram the other day to the point that now Instagram is recommending me Afghan dressmakers in my in my advertisements because um, they're so colorful and they have such beautiful, intricate beadwork. 
and uh, like little little bells and reflective pieces. Um, they are extremely eye catching. Uh, not something that is not supposed to be looked at, like what the burqa is doing. It, you're not it, you're not supposed to be looking at that. Um, so this like propaganda to erase Afghanistan's own like rich culture really pisses me off. I think it's ridiculous. Um, also, I thought it was very interesting that if a woman is shown seeing her is seen showing her face in public, it's her male chaperone. It's her guardian that gets punished, not her. Right. Well, what this do you is think about that, Armin? It's very clever because you're saving money uh, by turning your the men in your family into police, ch free policing. Mm. Right. So instead of like having spending more money on policing women, you just add a law and you turn every man in the family into, you know, um, executing, you know, about uh, the laws of the country for free for the state. And if um, if you think like, oh, good, they're not punishing the woman, they are punishing the woman. They're, pun they're getting the men to punish the woman <laughs> if they misbehave. And, you know, as, as cruel as the Taliban is, um, given the men in the family have a lot more free hand on how to punish the woman because there's no observers in at least you know when the taliban does it the international community like people are watching the taliban there's a lot of reports on what happening to taliban if a taliban beats mm -hmm. a woman there's going to be a lot of eyes on that right but if you get the men in the family to uh uphold, you know to tell them to punish the woman if they misbehave then it's happening behind closed doors and you know men in afghan many many men not all in afghanistan could be even more brutal than the law even if the law is taliban just as you know um i just want to show you what susie was talking about yay like okay yes i think this is a good example of this traditional is this is this is traditional afghanist afghani clothes yes. right yes yes it is very colorful. Mm hmm Yeah. It just, oh my gosh. And also, there's this beautiful dance that Afghans do. It's called the Atan. The Atan. Oh my gosh. I love watching the Atan. And it just makes me so mad to think about, like, because a lot of regions in Afghanistan, like, celebrate Nowruz. Um, how many, like, the systematic erasure of your own culture. It's kind of like a like a self cultural genocide. It's crazy. Like think about oh, well, men and women can't even dance together on no rules to dance the Atan, you know. Um, also, it should be noted that there are regions. Well, we're, we we happen to be talking about the Taliban, yeah. And then this is what they want instead. Hey, this is better than the blue thing that they had before. This is a new the the. The old Taliban outfit looked blue. This is this is at least kind of like cool in a scary way. You know, like you look like the a Dementor. I don't you know, is that how you say it? Anyway, yeah, like this from is, Harry Potter. Yeah, this the is thing a, that sucks your soul out. Yeah, it looks like yes, that. It looks exactly like that. It represents misery and sadness. Basically, they went exactly and, with what what? <laughs> I mean, a lot of women I know personally who have had to wear that, they say, yeah, it does suck your soul out. Yeah, actually, you know, think about you, you, when, in fiction, when they want to represent, you know, absolute sadness and misery, okay, something that sucks your soul out, this is the depiction they go with, right? So what does that tell you? Okay, here, this is very low res. I wasn't expecting that. I will find something better. But what does that say about your, you know, the, how you're treating women when what you make them, the clothing that you pick for them is exactly what other people have used to depict absolute sadness and misery? Like, what does that, what is that going to do to the psyche 
of the woman in Afghanistan, right? This is exact. Look, it's almost ex it's almost exactly it's, it's, the same. It's literally the same. Oh my god, it is exactly the it's same. It's literally the same as the <laughs> Grim Reaper. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Holy cow! And, I mean, don't you think like you're on the wrong side if you if you're for this and you're against this? Mm -hmm. You're like this bad, and this is good. Doesn't that like? Don't you like? Wouldn't you think like? Okay, we're we're the baddies, we're the baddies in scenario. We like this. And they openly say that they're on hate the side it. of death against life. No, but can you not see that you're the you're you're not the good guys here? Like it's like movie, like if, like this is too. Like in a villain in movies, when you want to show the evil people looking like dark and black and gloomy and then the good people as like colorful and happy with light. you like this is like you're like this this movie is too cheap like real life is not like that real life is not this black and white right you're like re real life is more complicated right but then in real life you have the villains look like this like make people look like this these these women are not villains uh, i was gonna say these women are victims okay and and you're against this like this is too much like a I don't know. It's a little you too have... on the nose. Yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, no, I agree. And by the way, YouTube, we are not saying that uh we're yeah. talking about we're not saying that these women are dementors or no grim reapers. It's saying that the outfits evoke that kind of imagery. No, we're Anyways. saying no no no. We're saying imagine how how much these women are being made to suffer when the clothes that is being forced upon them is something that in fiction uh, people use as representing yeah. absolute misery. Like imagine the emotional toll that this will have over years and years and years of people's lives. When when they go out in public and they want to socialize with other women, this is how they have been. This is how they look, and this is how they see other women. I mean, guys, with this whole pandemic, the the masks itself. A lot of people have realized how much emotional toll this have had on people over the past two years, especially on children. Yeah, because because you can't get emotional cues from other people seeing people's faces. A lot of psychologists have are noticing how much this is, how important it is for you to be able to get emotional cues from other people's faces. Oh, it's literally the, the most important thing. We get more from our emotionality expressed facially than our vocabulary, the words we're using, like over 70%. Yeah, I mean, imagine a whole generation of children growing up being, more, maybe being deficient in, real, in being able to read emotional cues or not getting that um, human face-to-face -face contact that the other children grow up with for years, but not for two years. But imagine now women in Afghanistan, ch little girls in Afghanistan growing up and that being most of their life. It's not just two years of pandemic. That's every, and also dark and also black, soulless, without Lit any- oh. Literally designed with the intention of wiping away your individuality. Exactly. Yeah. On a different note, I mean, this is kind of silly, but imagine the stress of trying to find your mom in a market. Like you're a little kid, you're in the market, you get separated from your mom, and you have to try to find your mom when everyone's wearing a burka. <laughs> like oh. this dress. I want to show this one actually. This video is so. So this is the video where they uh, they let girls go to school. At first, but then they closed the school because the uniforms were not, the outfits mm -hmm. were not Islamic enough, and they said like we're gonna, we're gonna close it for now, because this we have to figure out a different kind of outfit for girls before we open it again. So this tweet says, "Mother, okay, the girl is gonna, cry. I'm gonna play the video, but the girl is coming back from school, and she's telling her mother, mother, they didn't let me go to school today. They said girls aren't allowed to go to school." Because they got very excited at first because schools were reopened for girls and they were so excited because they thought they're going to lose school. But then after they reopened it, they realized, a Taliban realized that they're not at all okay with this and they clo closed back again. So it was so sad because on the day that the girls thought that they get to go back to school, 
they shot it on that day. A lot of I saw a lot of videos of uh, people trying to, you know, girls uh, trying to express what's happening, and they were trying to hold back their tears and failing at it. But this was one of the examples. Here, let me just play this. Oh wait, let me open the audio. Wait, do we have audio here? <laughs> No. I actually understood that she was speaking Persian. Okay. I understood um, the doctor. Eh? Oh yeah, you understood the doctor. Yes, yeah, she said they said girls aren't allowed to go to school. Look how she's so sad. I've never seen children being so eager to go to school as much as seen as, as much as I've seen Afghan girls showing so much eagerness like i you know like the amount of uh, passion and push for children children girls in afghanistan desperately begging everybody to let them go to school i've never seen that anywhere <laughs> oh look at her she's so disappointed i mean her entire f hair is covered i think like yeah and she's a child why does she need to co guys she's a child they're saying this is like they want hair to cover because apparently this this causes arousal. God damn it. All right. That's literally their argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Self report. <laughs> <laughs> Someone called the FBI. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Oh, wait, let's read this one because we should. You want to read this one by Secular Sakai? The NRF just opened a renewed front oh. against the Taliban in Panjshir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I don't know if they have any chance, but yeah, I did say that. Hey, guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.